Here on FTD Facts, we've been doing a couple of videos on Boeing versus Airbus. And with that, we take a look at their big passenger airplanes, the double-decker planes that look like flying bathtubs. Today, we look at the Airbus A380 and the 747 Boeing aircraft and find out the differences between the two. What is going on, everybody? My name is Dave Wapple, and welcome to FTD Facts, the channel where well, I look at people, cultures, and places normally. But in this case, you guys have been wanting a lot of Boeing and Airbus videos. I mean, I, I'm not going to judge or anything, but I don't know why you guys have watched all these videos. But the nice part that I take away from that is the fact that because you guys want them, I'm doing a lot of research on its history, and I find that sort of stuff fascinating. And let's be real, the introduction of the 747, man, it was a historical achievement. So with that, we're going to get into the video. But before I do, if you guys just like this topic and you guys want more stuff around it, be sure to hit that like button. Also done some cool playlists that you guys might be interested in. Feel free to check it out. And I just want to let you guys know quickly about Grammarly.com. If you guys suck at grammar like I do, you guys are really going to benefit from it. It's a nice free program. I'll put it down there in the description box below, but do it at the end of the video because you want to learn about these aircrafts, right? Let's do it. So, starting it all off, the Boeing 747 class as a whole is the biggest for the company. Specifically, the 747-8 series is the largest of all variants. The 747 had its first flight on February 9th, 1969. And eventually, it was introduced to the world on January 22nd, 1970, opening with Pan American Airways. Now, this was a groundbreaking achievement. It was the first wide-body plane ever made. And it was the very first plane to be considered a jumbo jet. I don't know why I said it like Austin Powers, but that's the way I think about it. Which basically, if you think about it, that is where the term actually comes from, all because of the 747. It's also held the rank of the largest passenger airplane for 37 years. So a lot of its development came obviously from military departments, and the U.S. began testing the idea of heavy lifting planes in the early 60s. One of the biggest planes ever made near the end of the 60s was the C-6 Galaxy made by Lockheed Martin. And some aspects of that plane were put, obviously, into the 747. One of the most important moments was in 1965 when the father of the 747, who was the chief engineer, Joe Souter, transferred into the department, handling the aircraft from there on. Now, like most commercial airplanes, uh, Pan American airplanes actually ordered 25 of these aircrafts before testing had ever actually begun. I don't know why, but in uh, my past videos, I've seen that that's very much a trait when it comes to airplanes. Companies and governments get really excited and they go, I'm buying them already without even a test. I don't know how that really works in the real world, but apparently it does. And with the order of 25 of these, it came in at approximately 525 million in 1966. And one thing to really understand how Boeing was dealing with this when Pan America made that deal, they had only 28 months to get this aircraft through development. That's a little over two years. Which actually, just in case you didn't know, is about two-thirds under the normal amount of development time for a plane. Now, you may wonder to yourself, how did they manage to build such a large aircraft? Well, this was thanks to the technology of high-bypass turbofan engines. This technology was developed by a few companies, but specifically the engine that was put in the 747 was the Pratt-Whitney JT-9D. And with that, on January 15th, 1970, the First Lady, Nat Nixon, christened the plane, and she began flying. And in today's world, the entire development for this aircraft from 1966 came in at approximately $7.2 billion. Now, the Airbus A380 was its major competitor, and it didn't have as good and as a positive time in production. Its first flight began on April 27th, 2005, and it was introduced on October 25th, 2007 with Singapore Airlines. In terms of size, yes, it is the largest aircraft in existence, at least in terms of passenger airplane. The development of this aircraft began in 1988, headed by Gene Roeder, who him and his team attempted to figure out a way to beat the 747. By 1990, the Airbus A380 was estimated to be a plane that would be about 15% less than the 747 in terms of operating cost. At the same time, Boeing was knee-deep in developing what was known as the New Large Airplane Program, 
which was a plane that was going to be much bigger than a 747. However, by 1993, Boeing canceled this program because it would cost too much. By the year 2000, Airbus formed the A3XX program, which would become the A380. And before things were even tested, 50 orders were already on the go, with a program cost of approximately $10.7 billion. And unfortunately, by the time the first aircraft was completed due to several development issues and setbacks, the cost of development came anywhere between 11 to 14 billion euros. As a matter of fact, the development cost of the Airbus A380 is one of the most controversial things in terms of commercial airline production. Because of the many ups and downs, such as the East Asian financial crisis, the actual production costs are not theoretically official, with most estimating in 2016 that the A380 came anywhere between $25 billion in 15 years. One of the hard parts of actually figuring out the cost of this is because it is a consortium company. So, you know, you have companies that are from different countries around the world. So getting official numbers is quite difficult. As a matter of fact, there is still a discussion of money as in 2019, Germany still wants 600 million euros from Airbus for the loans that it gave them. Now, okay, in terms of construction, there is a lot of differences between these two. For the construction of the Airbus A380, there are different parts built in different places around the world, such as France, Germany, Spain, and the United Kingdom. All these parts are eventually brought into the Jean-Luc Lagardère plant in Toulouse, France for final assembly. As a matter of fact, because the Airbus A380 has such large parts, it even has its own specialized shipping route called Le Ténéraire à Grand Gabarit. And within that, it has three ships that the Airbus owns known as the Ville de Boreau, the City of Hamburg, and the Ciudad de Cadiz which are roll on and off ships that transfer these parts around the world. On top of that, there's also the Airbus Beluga, which transports parts of the A380. For the 747 though, they don't work that way. They don't get parts from different places around the world and assemble them all in one kind of spot. Yes, of course, there may be some parts for the 747 that come from other places, but most of them are made within one plant. Originally, the company did not have a plant big enough to produce the 747. However, eventually the company created what is known as the Everett factory located in Everett, Washington. And as a matter of fact, most of all these 747 parts are made here. And then the plane is tested by a nearby airport. As a matter of fact, this building is the largest building of any building in the world coming in with a size of 472,370,319 cubic feet. Now, I know you guys are probably curious about the sizes of these aircrafts. Well, we'll get into that shortly, but the hard part is, is determining the size because there's so many different variants. Let's look at variants. With the Boeing 747, there was the 100 series, which was the first. Eventually, there was one that was made for the Japanese called the 747SR, which had less fuel capacity, but more seats. After that, there is the 747-100B series, which had greater fuel capacity. There was also the 747SP for Iran, which had more capacity. The 400 series is the most sold of the 747 series, coming in at 442 of them been purchased. The 300 series series is probably the biggest jump in size for passengers going from 366. Eventually this goes up more with passengers. However, by the newer 747 8 series, it has a capacity of around 467 passengers. This was the first class that was considered a stretch version of the 747. There is also military versions. As a matter of fact, Air Force One is known to be a VC-25, which is a 747 variant, and there are only two of those made in VIP type. As well, there is the SCA version, which carries the shuttle. Again, only two of those were ever made. As a matter of fact, there was also the 747 Dreamlifter, which was huge, and it was the largest until the Airbus Beluga took that title. Overall, for the 747, there's about 20 different variants. Now, the Airbus A380 doesn't really have a lot of variants. As a matter of fact, it's kind of a solo aircraft. Besides its normal A380-800, there is also the A380-F series, which is basically the freighter version. However, recently it's been taken off of the website, I guess due to the fact that not many people purchased it. Keep in mind, within your basic A380-800 series, they offer two different styles of seating. To understand it, if you have seating done in three different classes, you could fit up to 575 people. However, 
if you put the whole plane as economy class, you could set up to 853 for seating. There are some other future variants that are planned and some past ones that were not made. Now specifications, this is where we got to take a look. Now let's look at the largest 747 and that is the 8 and compare it to the Airbus. In terms of size besides passengers, the 747 is still the longest. The 747-8 has a length of 76.25 meters where the Airbus A380 comes in at 72.72 meters, making the 747-8 the longest aircraft of mass production in the entire world. The thing with Airbus though, they are fatter aircrafts. That's why you get more people on board. The Airbus in terms of width comes in at 79.75 meters, whereas the 747-8 only comes in at 68.4 meters. For height, the Boeing comes in at 19.4 meters and for the Airbus aircraft, it comes in at 24.09 meters. Also, when it comes to cargo space, the Airbus is around 175.2 meters cubed, where Boeing actually comes in at a lot larger at 179.7 meters cubed, making the 747 still much larger in terms of cargo space. For the 747 speed, it comes in at 933 kilometers with a range of 14,320 kilometers. The Airbus A380 comes in at 903 kilometers for a range of 14,800 kilometers. However, at full speed, the A380 goes approximately Mach 8.9, where the 747 is faster at Mach 0.90. The old ones are actually even faster at Mach 9.2. And in terms of how many of these have been built in December of 2018, it's said that there is about 1,548 747s. And as of February 2019, there's only been about 234 Airbus A380s. And lastly, when it comes to price, well, the Airbus is about 10% more expensive than your 747. The latest 747 comes in at around $402.9 million, whereas the A380 sits around $445.6 million as of 2018. So I guess the real question now is which one would you buy? Well, thanks for hanging out with me, guys, and learning about the differences between these two aircrafts. I mean, the 747, it's just, it's got that unique look that I don't think will ever be built. You know, that raised little bump at the top. It's just kind of cool. But I want to know your thoughts on that. Feel free to hit that like button if you like this video. And don't forget to check out Grammarly.com down there in the description box below. But on that, I'm Dave Wapple. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay? Okay, by the way, here are some cool playlists that I think you guys will like and enjoy, especially if you like planes and military craft and all that sort of stuff. These are the kind of things that I think you guys will really, really like. Other than that, hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.